Much of Harry Potter's charm lies in its characters, big and small. Whether it be the Golden Trio, or even those characters who simply make two-page cameos for a comedic effect, the characters which populate the wizarding world bring it to life, even if they themselves aren't actually alive. Moaning Myrtle, known as Myrtle Warren while alive, is no exception. Though she can add some comedy to the series through her dramatics, hers is actually quite a tragic story. Not only did she die a sudden death while a student, but now she's doomed to roam the corridors of Hogwarts forever, endlessly feeling sorry for herself. Though her role in the series is relatively small, Myrtle, like all of the Wizarding World's characters, has her own, albeit brief, life story. Before we continue, I'm Riley and this is Otherworldly Fiction. On this channel, I discuss fantasy books, share bookish lore, offer book-related opinions, and give the occasional writing advice. If any of this sounds like your cup of polyjuice potion, hit that subscribe button. Posts are on Friday. Myrtle, known as Myrtle Elizabeth Warren, was born sometime between 1928 and 1929. She faced challenges immediately on being invited to attend Hogwarts, between 1939 and 1940, as she was a muggle-born. Moreover, she wore glasses, she was pudgy, and she suffered from terrible acne. Finally, she wore her emotions out on her sleeve, crying rather loudly and excessively when her feelings were hurt, which was often. Taking her background, her appearance, and her personality together, Myrtle was a prime target for bullying and the abuse she suffered at the hands of her fellow students was endless. The student who picked on her most relentlessly was Olive Hornby, but Olive would come to suffer for her actions. Centuries ago, during the school's founding, Salazar Slytherin built a hidden area, known simply as the Chamber of Secrets, in which he housed the deadly basilisk. A snake of monstrous size, the basilisk glare can kill anyone who meets its eyes. But following Slytherin's departure, the chamber lay dormant until 1943. Slytherin's heir, none other than Voldemort himself, known then as Tom Riddle, reawakened the basilisk, wielding the snake to kill Muggleborns. His first victim, through his control of the beast, was none other than Myrtle, making Myrtle the first of Voldemort's long string of murders. Myrtle's death served as the catalyst for Voldemort's creation of his first horcrux, the diary Harry would later destroy with his own basilisk's fang. For hours, Myrtle's body lay in the girl's washroom. Myrtle had fled there in tears, ducking into a stall to cry herself out. However, her sobbing was interrupted by the sound of a boy's voice. Furious that a boy had come into a girl's washroom, she confronted him, only to see Riddle coaxing the snake from the entrance hidden there. Before Myrtle could flee, Tom ordered the serpent to look at her, and Myrtle died on the spot. Myrtle remained as a ghost following her early end, mostly to enact revenge on those who had bullied her, and it was none other than her worst tormentor, Olive, who had been teasing Myrtle about her glasses, who discovered her body after hours of Myrtle being absent. Myrtle watched as Olive entered the room, asking as she did if Myrtle was in there moping again. Her comment was cut short on finding the little girl's corpse. Olive would have cause to regret hurting Myrtle. Now a ghost, Myrtle haunted Olive, dogging her every step to remind her of how awful she'd been. Olive wasn't even given a reprieve at family functions, as Myrtle arrived at her brother's wedding to make a scene. Olive was finally forced to appeal to the Ministry of Magic to stop Myrtle's harassment, getting for her trouble the Wizarding World's equivalent of a restraining order. The Ministry ordered Myrtle to remain at Hogwarts, and, though Myrtle seemed to obey this edict, 
She would later announce to Harry that she had forced Olive to remember her until she too had died. Following her death, no one bothered to speak with Myrtle. Even the teachers neglected to interview her, despite the critical clues she carried. And desperate to find a suspect, they, acting on Riddle's manipulations, expelled Hagrid for the deaths. With his own pet monster, an acromantula in tow, Hagrid was the perfect scapegoat. But Riddle, lest he be caught, was unable to open the chamber again until Harry Potter's second year. Confined to Hogwarts, Myrtle mostly moped about the washroom where she died. She was so disruptive that the washroom all but fell into disuse, though she'd occasionally visit other washrooms too, including the prefect's bathroom, where she'd spy on the prefects as they took their baths. Moreover, Myrtle, sometimes being flushed down toilets, would frequent the Black Lake. She was extremely protective of her own designated toilet in what had become her washroom, though she offered to share this toilet with Harry if he also died. As a result of her washroom being abandoned, it became a perfect place for students to perform band activities, including, in the case of the Golden Trio, the mixture of polyjuice potion. It wasn't until the year of 1992 to 1993 that the Chamber of Secrets was opened again. On the night of Halloween, attending Nick's death day party, Myrtle was introduced to the Golden Trio, rather horribly, by the poltergeist Peeves. Hermione, noting Myrtle among the crowd, explained her frustrations with the ghost to Harry and Ron, only for her unflattering remarks to be heard by the poltergeist. Ever eager to cause problems, Peeves flew over to Myrtle to inform her that Hermione was talking about her. Hermione tried to cover up, attempting to compliment Myrtle, but the hysterical ghost accused Hermione of lying and fled in tears. Not content with this latest trick, Peeves then pursued the poor dead girl by tossing moldy peanuts at her, adding that Myrtle was spotty. That night, distraught over the incident at the death day party, Myrtle actually attempted suicide, only to remember she was already dead. She was further agitated in the night when a frightened Ginny, unnerved by the diary's connection to her missing memories, attempted to flush Tom Riddle's diary down the toilet. For this, Myrtle flooded the girls' washroom. As Harry and Ron investigated the renewed attacks within the school during their second year, they deduced who the original victim had been. On interrogating Malfoy, the boys learned a Muggleborn had died. And on speaking with Aragog, the boys heard of a student who died in a washroom. Piecing together that Myrtle was the victim, Harry went to speak with her. Though he already knew about the basilisk, having read Hermione's clue, Myrtle's description of the yellow eyes she saw told Harry what he needed to know, that the hidden entrance was in Myrtle's washroom. Despite her defensiveness, Myrtle was flattered by Harry's seeming interest in her death. Her crush for him amplified. After using a basilisk fang to destroy the horcrux that had been the product of Myrtle's death, Harry forgot Myrtle. It wasn't until his fourth year, whilst trying to solve the clue given to him for the second of the Triwizard Tournament's tasks, that Harry met her again. Sitting in the prefix bathroom, mauling over the golden egg, Harry was mortified to discover the teen ghost spying on him. Though she promised she'd closed her eyes whilst Harry was getting in, she let on that she spied on several of the prefects, including Cedric, whose bathwater was almost bereft of bubbles by the time he worked the clue out. Though Myrtle's account of how Cedric solved the egg helped Harry, the 14-year-old wizard was nevertheless made awkward by Myrtle's obvious interest in him and the other boys who'd bathed there. Later, during the second task, Myrtle helped Harry again. An occasional visitor of the Black Lake, she appeared there to direct Harry towards the Merpeople's village, where the champion's treasures, fellow students, were being kept. As a result of her help, Harry was the first champion to arrive there. As with before, Harry again forgot Myrtle. It was in his sixth year that he learned she'd found another friend. 
Disappointed in Harry for not visiting her, she mentioned another boy who was lonely. She described this other boy as sensitive, adding that he was also bullied and had no one he could confide in. Harry, with some shock, would notice Malfoy and Moaning Myrtle together on the map but wouldn't realize the extent of the friendship until his duel with Malfoy in the bathroom, which Myrtle, with much noise, would witness. Following Malfoy's injuries from the fight, Myrtle was asked to leave the scene by Snape. Malfoy, tasked with killing Dumbledore, lest his own family be killed, began to crack. Discovered in his grief by Myrtle, he actually shared the truth with her. Myrtle became his confidant the only person, though dead, with whom he could share his problems. In turn, Myrtle shared her own life. The unlikely pair found comfort in one another, and in this way, Malfoy actually grew closer to Myrtle than Harry did. Of course, close as she was to Malfoy, Myrtle's affection for Harry didn't disappear. When she caught a glimpse of Harry as an adult, she noted that he was handsome and tall. When Albus Potter and Scorpius Malfoy needed an entrance from the school during their misadventure with the Time Turner, Myrtle, still fond of their fathers, agreed to help. When Harry and Malfoy then entered the washroom, Myrtle in turn helped them. She told the young men the truth, ever anxious to do what she could for the students she'd adored. Myrtle, like many of the characters which populate the series, is another, no pun intended, larger-than-life character. Though ridiculous at first, hers is also a sad and sympathetic story of a bullied girl who died before her time. Moreover, her character, flawed and annoying and pitiable, nevertheless evokes sympathy, not only for herself, but for other characters. Her relationship with Malfoy is a highlight of her story, a moment which reveals that anyone, even those who themselves seem cruel, can be lonely. She reveals a side of Malfoy readers might not have suspected, and in looking at her story we find not just another colorful side character, but a depth to all the characters which make this series so endearing. Forgotten if she's lucky, and bullied if she's not, Myrtle deserved more, and the least readers can do is remember a girl who, while occasionally misguided, wanted to help those who were kind to her. What Harry Potter character do you want to learn more about? Were you surprised by Myrtle's story? Would you like to hear the histories of other ghosts? Sound off in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and happy reading.